In this video, I'll go through how to add projectile attacks to your character. I'll mainly focus on the fox character for the projectile, but if you're looking for a projectile that has a knockback and sprite animations, I should have a timestamp in the description where I go through Wolf's projectile attack. With that being said, don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoyed my videos and they've been helpful, and join the Patreon for access to the files and scripts of this video. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is add in a marker 2D node. In Godot 3.5, it's going to be called Position 2D. And we're going to move this somewhere else so that it is clear where we are adding it. And we're going to call this gun underscore pods for gun underscore position. Then from here, what we're going to do is go into the Fox script and we're going to scroll up. And where all our unready variables are, we're going to add in a new one. This is going to be the unready variable for the gun position. So the way this is going to work is we're going to make this be the position that our projectile will come out from. And so this can be changed to, where, to wherever. So if you want to shoot in front of you, it'll be positioned somewhere around here. If you want to shoot the gun above you, then it might be a position above there or even below you, you might position it down here. We will be able to set these coordinates within the script itself or within the code. And so the next thing you want to do is create a new scene. And so the root of this scene is going to be in area 2D. And then underneath the area 2D, we're going to have a collision shape. And underneath the area 2D again, we're going to have a sprite 2D. So with the sprite 2D node, we're going to make it a laser. And so the way you find the laser is by putting N special and it should come up with this strip over here. What you want to do is drag this strip into the texture for the sprite 2D node. And if you want to, you can change the texture from inherit to nearest so that it is extra crispy. And so for the collision shape, all you really have to do is align the collision shape to be around the same size as the projectile. Preferably, you might actually want to make the collision shape smaller than the projectile. So something like so you might want to make it something like this where the hitbox for the projectile is actually slimmer than the sprite itself. And so what I've done is I've now attached a script to it and so this is the script. The way the script works is actually quite self-explanatory. We have four variables up here, four variables down here and a process function. The laser speed is the number of pixels the projectile will move across in the next frame. Then you have the duration. The duration is the number of frames the laser will last for. And then you have the damage. Damage is the amount of damage the projectile will do to, opponent, to the opponent player. Moving on to frame, frame is the number of frames the projectile has been instantiated for. So right now it's zero, but later in the process you'll see that it'll be incremented. And direction, direction I've actually split into two, DRRX and DRRY. This is the direction the projectile will be set in. So for example, a, a direction of one in the X axis but a direction of zero in the y-axis would mean that the projectile will move eastwards. Then you have the player list. The player list is very important. It is the list of players the projectile cannot collide with. It is the list of players the projectile cannot collide with. And so moving down here, we have the frame counter and it's being incremented by one each frame. The reason why it's being done this way rather than just frame plus equals one is so that the frame counter is unaffected by changes in the engine in the game engine's time scale. So if the engine time scale is at something like 0.5, so it's moving at half speed, this frame counter will still increase at the same rate and won't be affected by that. Then over here, what we've done is we've made it so that once the frames of the projectile has lasted for its duration, the projectile will be destroyed. And over here, I'm just setting its motion. Don't forget to add delta over here. That's quite important. And then lastly, we have set the rotation of the projectile. And so then what I did after that was I attached a signal into the script so that if the body is not within the player list, AKA if, you, if, if it is within the player list, it will go past. So if let's say you're doing teams or the player who actually spawns the laser itself, that, that player will automatically be added to the playlist. If it's an enemy, they are not within the playlist. So you can actually get rid of this line. This is just for debugging. But if the player that if the player that has collided with this hitbox is not in the playlist, then the player is going to increment in damage and the hitbox is going to free itself. And so this is the actual scene that we're going to use for spawning in the projectile. If you're working with a projectile that has a knockback property and a moving sprite, I'll use Wolf's laser as an example. 
So over here, as you can see, instead of using a sprite 2D, I'm using an animated sprite 2D, which allows me to use different sprites for the animation of the projectile. So when I play it, this is what it's going to look like when it's traveling. As for the script, it looks quite different. It's more lines of code and I'll explain what each of this does. Alright, so the script to use for the projectile, for the wolf's projectile laser is actually very similar to the hitbox script. I've actually borrowed a lot of the variables from there. And so the variables here are quite similar to before, except for the knockback variables. These are all the variables that you use for the knockback, knockback growth, angles, percentages, weight, etc, etc. So this is just borrowed from the hitbox scene. You can just copy, the, uh, copy this if you would like to. I have this angle conversion constant. This is just so that I can convert angles from degrees into radian. And so I'm just going to skip over the direction because I've already explained that. Skip over physics process. Now this is very important. This is a different way of calculating how the player is going to be launched. It's very similar to the hitbox scene as you can see up here, but it's a bit different. So I'll explain what this does. What this is going to do differently from the hitbox is simply make it so that once the area has collided with the opponent, the player's hit stun is going to be carried out by this hit stun function, which is the same as before in the hitbox scene. And then scrolling up, we're going to make it so that the opponent's uh, state machine state is equal to the hit freeze state. And we're going to make it so that the hit freeze function within the state machine which should be, if I go down here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'll go to Fox's character. So in the state machine, there's a function called hit freeze down here, which takes in two parameters and this being a list. So what I do within Fox's laser is make it so that if you look at the parameters of this function, there are four elements in this list. So you have the knockback in the x direction, knockback in the y direction, horizontal decay and vertical decay. For me to get each of these, all I had to do was get the horizontal velocity, vertical velocity, horizontal decay and vertical decay and put it within a list within this uh, function. For me to get these, I, I literally just copied it from the hitbox scene up here, but put it into the projectile script. And so I copied and pasted it. And so I put it here. And so the way this will work is when this projectile collides with the opponent, then the opponent will be knocked back. And so with that being said, the next thing we want to add is another pack scene, which is going to be for the projectile. And so this is where our projectile is going to be spawned from, from this variable over here. And so once you've done that, you want to move to where the create hitbox function is. And underneath that, we're going to add in a new function and it's going to be called create projectile. The way this works is very simple. There are three attributes or there are three parameters that you're going to be using for this function. Di uh, direction X, direction Y and point. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, direction X and direction Y is the direction in which the projectile is going to be moving in. You could also reformat this to use a, an angle simply if you want that to be the case. But I, cho I chose to have an X and Y coordinate based angle system. And lastly, a point. This point refers to the gun position that we made earlier. So it's very simple. You're going to instance the projectile, which should be uh, Fox's laser in this instance. And we're going to add to its player list the parent's character or the, the character who's spawning it in, which would be Fox in this case. And so after that, we are now adding in the projectile instance. So we're adding the projectile and we're setting the position of gun position. If the direction is 1, aka if our player character is facing towards the right, the laser in the x-axis would be positive. If not, then it will be negative. So once that has been set, the last thing we're going to do is set the global position of the projectile and make it equal to the global position of the gun or underscore position over here. So we're going to make it equal to this. So wherever this is, the projectile will come out from. And then we're going to run, return projectile, dot, uh, projectile instance. So as an example of a function that may spawn in the projectile, I'm going to make in a new category of attacks. So we already have tilts. 
we already have uh, aerials so I'm now going to add in special and the first special attack that we're going to have would be neutral special and so what we're saying here is if frame is equal to 4 then we're going to create a projectile that will shoot in the positive x direction 0 in the y direction and with the gun pause being at a position of 50 pixels to the center of the box so 50 pixels in this direction and so after frame 14 the attack will be finished and our fox character is ready to move so as for the state machine when it comes to the spawning of our neutral special it will look something like this this is quite simple all we are simply checking is whether or not in this section of the code if our player character is in the air if our player character is in the air then they will carry out their air, their air movement if they are not in the air friction will be applied to them furthermore if the current frame of the attack is one or let's say zero then it's simply going to spawn the projectile from its parent in neutral special and so the way this works is by simply creating checking if parent cooldown is equal to one if parent cooldown is equal to one then it will now be equal to zero on this line if it is equal to zero then it will be plus one and then from there if it is equal to zero it will reset the frame and go back to neutral special so it'll be a positive feedback loop if you keep pressing neutral special from there if parent dot frame is less than 14 and you input the special attack is going to return neutral special so let's say you're you've shot a laser before your attack is finished if you press special again at the end of the attack you'll go back into neutral special and if neutral special is equal to two to true and you're in the air you'll go back into the air state and if it's not equal to air you'll go into the stand state in fact when it comes to this neutral special state you want to change this to if aerial is not equal to true and then make this else Furthermore, when you scroll all the way down and then you go to the aerials function, which is over here, you want to add in some new states. And so this state would also include states.neutral special, which should look something like this. So it should look something like this. Another thing that you might want to do is scroll down and we're going to add in a new category of attacks. And we're simply just going to call this attacks. And underneath here we're going to add in this variable called projectile underscore cooldown this will be used simply to instantiate the cooldown file projectile so that you cannot spam it infinitely and so the next thing you want to do is add in the animation and the label for the neutral special so simply above now we're going to add in a line of code that looks like this states on neutral special play animation and then neutral special then parent.states.text is going to look like this and so for the sake of the video this is how we're going to add a neutral attack for our fox character when it comes to the actual special attacks which i should have another video on your neutral special aka your laser in this case should be a part of your special attack tree similar to our air attack and our ground attack tree but for the sake of just simply doing a projectile I'll simply make neutral special its own state without any tree from it to derive out from. So what you want to do is add in a line of code that looks like this. Add state and then neutral special. And then at the very bottom you want to add in a new function maybe around where the aerial uh, function is and the top function is you want to add in a new function that looks something like this. So function special if states include and then these states so these are the states that you're going to be able to do a special attack out from in this case we're doing neutral special it's going to return true and so once you've done this you want to scroll all the way to the top and then get transitions you want to add in a new condition for returning a new state and it's going to look something like this so what this is saying is if you have just pressed the uh, special attack button and special is true then you're going to reset the frame to zero 
and you're gonna return the neutral special for the special attack video it should just say special but for the sake of this video just to demonstrate projectiles and neutral special it will return neutral special and so once you've done that we can go and test out if this works before we see and test if this works don't forget to go to your project project settings go to input map and make sure you have your special attack assigned so before we actually go into the main stage what you want to do is click on fox instantiate the projectile scene that we had from over here save then what we can do is go to the project go to project settings input map and make sure you have a button assigned to the special move once you've done that go to the test stage and you want to make sure you've added in a fox character which i have already and then from here you can actually start the game and the first thing you'll notice is that we are now able to shoot our projectile now you may notice actually that we're not able to shoot it in the air this is something that we can fix really quickly all you have to do to fix the code so that your character is now able to shoot in there is go into the state machine go all the way to the top where it says if you input special and the special attack and special is equal to true you go into neutral special all you have to do is go to the air state so if i go to air add in a new line of code that looks something like this so you want to make it look like this and then get rid of and special is equal to true and so it in our special attacks video this might actually just say special but for the sake of projectiles this would go into neutral special so from here if i start the game again i'm now able to shoot my gun in the air there we go so i can do something like i can do something like this like that shoot one laser in the air and then jump again and the last thing i want to test out here is actually the wolf's projectile the projectile that has a hit freeze on it and a hitbox on it so as you can see the animation is playing very well and it works perfectly fine with the knockback that i've set for it so yeah that should be it and that's it for this video don't forget to like the video and subscribe if the series has been helpful and check out the patreon for access to the source code in the next video i'll be going over adding the other special attacks so with that being said I'll see you in the next video. Peace.